This is AM Agenda. Good morning and welcome to the program. Today, some breaking news that Caltex is set to close its iconic Kernel oil refinery. Some 800 jobs and contracted positions are at risk. There will be... I'm just, I'm just being told there'll be 300 job losses, but there are other contractor positions also at risk. Let's get some immediate reaction this morning. The shadow, the Assistant Treasurer, David Bradbury in Melbourne. David, some bad news on the, the employment front. Good morning, Kieran. Uh, it certainly seems that way. And obviously we're all waiting for uh, some more details to come through in relation to uh, Caltex and, and imminent announcement. Uh, but obviously from the government's perspective, uh, we, uh, we never like to see anyone uh, lose a job uh, and clearly it appears as though there will be some people that will be in that position. Uh, this is something that uh, we're obviously very, very much aware of the challenges uh, right across the economy. Uh, there are some sectors that are doing it tougher than others and uh, in those circumstances we are determined to try and make sure that we spread the wealth and spread the benefits of uh, the, the resources boom that is benefiting so many parts of our economy. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the particular cases at hand, uh, obviously the government, uh, our, uh, our thoughts go out to those workers that may be affected by the announcements that uh, it appears are going to be made. And David, it, it is an iconic refinery, this one, isn't it? It's been part of Sydney for so long. It reflects more than just a, a business decision, doesn't it, as to the nature of that industry in this city, in this country? Mm. Well, look, it, it certainly has been a, an iconic uh, business uh, within Sydney and Australia in the past. Uh, I think we do have to wait until we see further details of an announcement that is to be made. Uh, but obviously, uh, as I said earlier, uh, we don't like to see any Australian losing their job. It appears as though there are Australians that will be losing their job as, as a result of this announcement. Uh, and uh, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, that the people involved do know that, uh, that our thoughts are with them. David, let's move on now. Uh, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, uh, David Bradbury, there will be a lot in the disability sector who are just outraged mm. this morning that our leaders could not come to the table and secure a compromise when all the parties agree. It's ridiculous. Over $110 million uh, in, uh, in three years. How, how can the federal government allow that to happen? Well, look, um, you know, I think most Australians suffering with disability and, and their carers and, and those that know them would be devastated by the lack of agreement that has been reached. Uh, but let's just have a look at what's occurred here. Uh, we, we, we have a group of Liberal state premiers out there with all of the lip service in the world mouthing the platitudes in support of the NDIS but not prepared to shell up an additional dollar in order to make it happen. Now, you know, this is one of two things. It's, it's either a case of those Liberal state premiers putting politics ahead of the people, the lives of uh, those individuals across our country uh, who, through no fault of their own, often it's the, the lottery of life uh, that has meant that they're living with disability. Uh, it is either a case of them putting politics ahead of those people or, or this is something more simple than that. And it's a case of, well, if you vote for a Liberal government, you get a Liberal government. And these are the sorts of heartless... Uh, approaches that we see. People prepared to mouth all of the platitudes in the world. Uh, Mr Newman, uh, well his state has a disgraceful record when it comes to funding disability and uh, you know Mr O'Farrell, uh, frankly for all of the platitudes that he's been prepared to mouth. Uh, in the context of the New South Wales budget, the very small ask that has been requested of but him... But if it is that small... Uh, I, thought, I think he should hang his head in but, shame. But if it is that small as the Prime Minister said yesterday and you've repeated that this morning, why doesn't the Commonwealth stump up? the extra money. It's only $70 million across three years. Well, Kieran, we are putting $1 billion on the table. But they've said no, uh, and, can, and can if I, you want it to go can, ahead, well, it's not well, that much. You're putting pride well, ahead of the well, decision as well, well, aren't you? Well, well <laughs> um, they either support it or they don't. You know, it's all right to have a big mouth in, in support, but you've got to put your money where your mouth is. Now, let's, let's just examine the, 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 the basis of what you've just said there. Uh, are we suggesting, you know, Mr Rabbit's out there saying he supports the NDIS, even though Mr Hockey has said it was a cruel hoax. Now, l let's just think about this for one moment. If you take the position that you've just put, Kieran, then the only way an NDIS is going to happen is if the Commonwealth stumps up all of the cash. 
Now, is that what Mr Abbott is proposing? But that's what the Productivity well, Commission so. suggested, isn't it? The Productivity Commission well, suggested that the Commonwealth fund the NDIS. Well, well, what is clear is that some states, even in terms of the, the baseline contributions that they are currently making, uh, need to pull their socks up. And Queensland is a perfect example of a state that has been underfunding disability for a long time. Now, if Mr Newman says that he is not prepared to put his money where his mouth is and support the NDIS, and, and the default position is that the disabled people of Queensland continue to get the treatment and the support that they have been getting in the past, then the reality is that, uh, that they will be getting less support than the Productivity Commission had suggested. But the states, now, the states uh, say the Productivity Commission, they, they make a fair argument on that, that the, the Productivity Commission suggested it's a Commonwealth initiative, should be Commonwealth funded. Well, hang on one moment. Uh, we've got Tasmania, South Australia, the ACT. Uh, these are states and territories that have come along to the COAG meeting, not just with lip service of support, but they've been prepared to make modest contributions, but in the context of their budgets, significant ones. Now, why is it that New South Wales and Victoria and Queensland, you now these larger states, uh, they, they have the capacity to make a modest contribution and they come along and they say, well, we want this, we just don't want to have to contribute anything. If we want to deliver better services for people with disability, then there's going to have to be a contribution being made. And if, if, if the point that you're making, Kieran, is that coalition policy is you have an NDI, NDIS and the Commonwealth pays for it, well, Mr Rabbit should come out and explain exactly how he would be prepared to fund all of that. Uh, and Mr Hockey, who's out there saying it's a cruel hoax, I think might have something else to say about it. David Bradbury, the, the Prime Minister needs a win at this moment uh, beyond the, the, the very important reform that uh, both all governments are supporting but can't come up on, with a compromise on. They, she needed some good news yesterday. She didn't get it. Let's, uh, when it comes to leadership, my, the Prime Minister asked about it last night on the 7.30 report. Let's play it for you. Whilst there's pressure around, and I do understand that people uh, sometimes say a few things responding to that pressure, the pressure is there because we're doing the big things, we're doing the labour things, we're shaping this nation's future, and my confidence is we've got so much more to do, and I'm the person to drive it and drive the team. So much to do, uh, but unable to achieve a compromise yesterday. Follows some awful ongoing numbers in the opinion polls, 28% primary. How long can Prime Minister Gillard survive in the job? Well, if the test is whether or not a Prime Minister is able to uh, reach support with the states, and you've got Liberal state premiers out there prepared to do whatever they can to deny, as you say, the Prime Minister a win, well, they weren't denying the Prime Minister a win. What they were doing was denying people with disability access to the funding and the support that they need. But on the question of leadership, uh, the Prime Minister is right. Uh, these, are, these are difficult reforms that we're in the business of implementing. We're doing it in difficult circumstances. We've got a minority government, yet we continue to get our program through. We've got uh, a number of state Liberal governments out there putting politics ahead of the national interest, uh, and um, none of us should be surprised by that. These are difficult circumstances in which uh, to, to mount a political case. But can I make this point? That notwithstanding all of that, uh, the inflation figures yesterday continue to show that the Australian economy is a standout performer across all the major advanced economies. Uh, now, the Prime Minister is delivering and leading it's our not, government... It's not, but it's not translating, is it? To, but people aren't giving your government credit for it, and certainly not the Prime Minister. There's this integrity issue that continues to, to dog people's perceptions of, of the government. Well, I'll, I'll let you engage in that sort of commentary, Kieran. But what I will say is that in, on the question of leadership, uh, we resolved this matter back in February decisively. Now, uh, I was out at a community forum in my electorate yesterday, and there were some good people there uh, who want to see Labor continue to govern because they understand the importance of what we're delivering for people in communities such as mine. And they sent a very clear message to me. They said uh, to all members of the government, get in behind the Prime Minister, get on with the job of delivering these Labor reforms okay. and make sure that we are a united front to take on the next election, which will be a tough election, but one that so many people out there, like people with disability, are counting on us to win. David Bradbury, we've got about a minute left. I just want to get your thoughts quickly on the slippy case, hundreds of documents released last night by the court suggesting James Ashby had sought to 
take part in the parliamentary delegation with the, the Speaker only a few weeks before lodging the sexual harassment claim. You, what are your thoughts on these latest uh, reports? Well, look, of course, I'm not going to, to comment on the specifics of the legal case that is ongoing. Uh, but what I can say in relation to the broader political debate around this issue is that uh, the Coalition's position has been built upon one very big lie. And that lie is, is, as each day goes by, is being exposed. And that lie was when Mr Rabbit came out and said that no Coalition member had any knowledge of what was occurring. Each day we see more and more information that is suggesting that there were multiple members of the Coalition, the Liberal National Party, that were in this up to their eyeballs. Uh, now, Mr Rabbit, hiding behind these weasel words of no specific knowledge, said that he didn't know anything about it. I think this, uh, and some of these revelations about the involvement of figures on the Sunshine Coast, it raises more questions, in my mind, about that meeting that Mr Hockey had when he went up onto the Sunshine Coast and met with Mr Bruff and Mr Palmer, said that he spoke about Mr Slipper, but denies that he discussed the question of Mr Ashby. David I think there are, there are real issues arising over the credibility of what Mr Hockey has had to say We're on this issue. We're out of time this morning. Thank you for your time, Assistant Treasurer David Bradbury. Appreciate it. Quick break on AM Agenda. We'll be right back.